G'day YouTube, 1MJ here, welcome back. Well, Saturday afternoon here in Australia, and we have some somewhat, you know, contradict, not contradict, contradictory, oh God, I can't even say that, contradictory, uh, you know, market sentiment. Uh, now, we can see this one here on Cointelegraph, bull flag breakout will decide whether Bitcoin goes to 16K or 14K. And then we can go over here, Bitcoin forecast, BTC overvalued on the verge of correction. Now, I suppose not completely contradictory, as this one says, you know, it could go lower down to 14,000, and that one says it just plain and simple will. Uh, you know, very hard to say. I mean, it is the weekend. Again, traditionally, we get a sell-off, and when we look at the charts soon, we'll see there sort of has been a sell-off. I mean, we got up to nearly 16,000 for Bitcoin not that long ago, so... Yeah, let's have a read of the story uh, first on this one. Bitcoin's bull flag will determine whether bears push the price to 14K or if bulls finally take the 16K mark. The Bitcoin price appears to be taking a short breather after reaching a new 2020 high at 15,960 on November 5th. The one hour and four hour time frame show the price are compressing with a flag and throughout the majority of the trading day, the $15,500 level has held as support. $15,750 is the level Bitcoin needs to break in order to pursue another stab at 16. So you can see there's a bit of a bull flag, uh, a sort of pennant thing happening there. Uh, and we'll have a look at that a bull chart. So uh, we'll have a look at that when we get over to the Bitcoin chart soon. Now we all know that Bitcoin's doing really well, but if we scroll down a little bit, so altcoins finally find their way. As Bitcoin price searches for direction, altcoins have regained, regained, sorry, I'm struggling today, <laughs> regained a smidgen of the vast territory lost over the past two months. And look, again, a majority of them went down sort of anywhere from 60% to 85%. Uh, and again, for altcoins, that's not unheard of. That's uh, what a you know a reasonable correction is. It's not sixty percent of the total uh, value that they're worth. It's sixty percent from the all-time high they've come down. So it's a relative term. If you don't really understand it, then yeah, it's harder to understand. But people didn't lose eighty-five percent of the total value of the coin. Just eighty-five percent uh, from its all-time high. Now, Ether is the most notable leader of the past few days as the altcoin has rallied to 447. Uh, it's gone even higher than that and is currently attempting to break uh, through resistance at 450. Uh, it's above 450 at the moment uh, and it's gotten quite close to 460. Now, Yearn Finance also made a strong move as it rallied more than 30% to 11,100. It was down at like 9,000, I think 800, something like that. And Uniswap's Unitoken uh, also made waves as it added 15% uh, and currently trades at $2.53. God, I really need that to go up because I really, yeah, I was on the wrong end of that one. I thought I was getting in cheap and it just went lower again. But look, that's what it is. I'm still, you know, confident that in the long run uh, I'll make my money back and some so I'm not too worried and look again and I've, I've said this and I'll say it, uh, you know whenever I feel I need to you're not going to win them all and you don't have to win them all if you can just get a couple of really good wins they'll make up for whatever losses you make dollar cost average in uh, unless you just you know really believe you know that some certain time is a really great time to get in and dump all your money but look, if you take that route, and I'm not saying it's always the wrong route, sometimes you know you might just get in at the perfect time uh, and it'll be great. But if it's not, just understand that you may have, again, you know, a, a 40, 50% correction uh, coming before it starts to make its way back up. And definitely, hopefully you've done your research and understand that things aren't in a bull, in a bear market. If they're in a bear market, then just hold off, wait for a trend reversal. Uh, and it'll generally be a bottoming out sort of pattern. Uh, it'll trade sideways uh, for quite some time, maybe slowly moving up or even sort of slowly moving down, but more sideways than anything. And that's generally when you've reached the bottom. Uh, you know, it can still be fairly rocky going up and down. So wait until it has a sideways pattern that lasts, you know, like a couple of weeks to maybe even a month. That's generally not the exact bottom, but it's just unlikely that it's going to go lower. That's the next accumulation phase. 
Now let's go over here and have a look at this. So this is more the one for the bears. The relative strength index uh, has been trending in the overvalued region since October 20. The 12 hour BTC chart is on the verge of flashing the sell signal with a, a green line candlestick. Bitcoin has been flying high for a month, recapturing the imagination of the mainstream since October 7th. Uh, since October 7, the price has gone up from 10,600 to 15,655. However, it looks like the resulting FOMO has bloated uh, the price to overvalued levels. Now look, that could be partly true, but I'm not sure if we're gonna have any big corrections. We could, I could be wrong. I just think there's a lot of institutions trying to get in at the moment and the retail FOMO is going to start soon and that's when things are really going to start to move. But look, that's all going to come after 20,000. There's still people now who just don't believe and still think it's a fake and it's all, it's not really on the big mainstream news. When your local news station starts to talk about Bitcoin and things like that on a somewhat regular basis and it's on the radio and you know your local cab driver's telling you now's the time to get in, <laughs> that's when the retail FOMO is there and that might be a good time to start taking some profits. Not financial advice, just my personal opinion. You gotta work it out for yourself. But, so, one says, look, it could break out and go higher and it definitely could. And the other one says, look, it's definitely going lower. Well, let's go and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. Now, I've got it on the four hourly chart at the moment. And this is that kind of pennant that we can see. So it is, it's coiling tighter and tighter. And look, absolutely possible that it rolls over and falls back down this way. But this is quite often uh, bullish. So it is possible that it gets tight and then just starts to rocket up even higher. Possible. Now, we'll get rid of these lines because we don't really need these lines. Anytime now, there we go, remove. And remove. Now again, this is on the four hourly chart. So we can see that we've been oversold and now we're sitting right on the line of, you know, being oversold uh, and under undervalued. So this is undervalued, not a bad time to buy when you're down here. And once you get to here and anything above, it's what they consider oversold. Now again, this is on the four hourly. Let's go to the daily. The daily is a better one to get a better sort of sentiment of how things are going. We want to look at bigger time frames generally. And here we can see that there's that little pennant that was starting to happen in there. So it is quite possible that this rolls over. Not guaranteed though. It is the weekend and maybe this is the sell-off that we're talking about. Look, it still could come. We could have a much bigger one later today or Sunday or even sort of Monday morning before the markets open. Even Monday morning when the markets open, maybe everyone decides that it's just been overbought. There could be a gap that gets formed uh, sort of in here around the CME gap and it could be uh, something that again, ha you know, might have to be filled before we can move on, although we've had a number of CME gaps that haven't been filled of late. So we'll have to wait and see. Now we see the RSI though on the daily, on the four hours it's up and above and below. And we can see, there we go, since the 20th of October, it's been oversold. It came down and touched here, and now it's way up here and slowly starting to come down. So look, yeah, chances are good there probably is gonna be a correction coming soon. But how big that correction in is, uh, is unknown. Uh, and look, there's, it could still stay here and it could still rise higher. Absolutely possible. But we'll have to wait and see. Time will tell. I, you know, I would be surprised if it came back and tested sort of, you know, this level here, the 13.8. Not to say it couldn't. I would be really surprised if it came back here and tested the $12,500 level. But it's not to say it couldn't. Anything's possible. If you keep an open mind to what could happen, you're going to have a better trading plan and you're going to be able to uh, better work out, you know, what's going to work for you and what's not going to work for you and, you know, how you should proceed in the market as opposed to, you know, just blindly, you know, chucking your money like you're going to a casino and just going, you know, put it all on black for me or pull it all on red, whatever you want to do, you know, understand you know, a bit about markets and how they go up and how they go down and how to read things like the RSI, read the volume, you know, read the moving averages and things like that, Bollinger Bands. There's a lot of really, really good uh, technical analysis stuff out there that can, you know, help you get a picture of what's happening. But it can also confuse you. For me, I don't like to use too many things. I mean, you know, we've used this today and had a look. Now let's get rid of that. I tell you what I use mainly is just these lines 
and the price. That is uh, my main technical analysis. If the price is pushing up and then you scale out and seeing it's been going up for quite some time, it's likely it's just going to keep going that way. But you know, I don't leverage trade and I don't go, all right, you know, if I've seen this and now is when I'm trying to get into the market, I'm not dumping all my money in at this price. And let's say I've got $10,000 and I come and check this uh, chart and I go, all right, geez, it was down here, it was $4,000 and now it's up around sort of 15400 I wouldn't be going, this is going to continue forever, I'm just going to dump in. You know, unless I was, you know, investing for the long term, then maybe I might do that. But short term, I'd probably take, you know, half of that ten thousand, if not less, put it in. Wait and see what happens in a few days to a week, because uh, we could have a correction, and then you've only, you know, lost sort of profits from half your money as opposed to all your money. But again, if you understand the fundamentals of what it's about and you believe in it long term, uh, then you know, and again, you've done your research. It, I guess it wouldn't really matter. You know, Grayscale were buying this just the other day at thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 and they bought a ton of it. They bought, I think, three times more uh, Bitcoin last week than what was mined in that week. So they still think it's undervalued. So really, if they're still buying it, I would, and they're going to be considered the smart money, probably, you know, not financial advice, just personal opinion. Maybe there's still still a really good price, but just understand that this could roll over, and you put ten thousand dollars in today, uh, come back in a few days, and all of a sudden it's worth you know eight and a half thousand dollars. You just got to be able to have a bit of you know steel about you and hold and realize that again here. Imagine you chucked your money in here when it was twelve thousand, twelve and a half thousand, and you'd seen all this, and you were thinking, oh, this is just going to keep going. Ah, this really hurt. And now all of a sudden you're down at $9,700. You know, you've lost nearly $3,000 in a week or two. But as long as you didn't panic and didn't, you know, yeah, freak out and then just sell it all, look where you've gone. So you bought at $12,500, it dumped down to $9,700, and now it's up at $15,500. And it could come down to $13,800. And then it could go up to sixteen thousand. You've just got to do a little bit of research and understand the fundamentals of investing and things like that, how charts work, before you just dive head first into things. But again, I don't use too much. I like to have a look at the volume. It just gives me a bit of idea of where the markets are at. Uh, I don't really use it for a whole lot. Uh, it just again, I can see where money's going in and where money's coming out and things like that. But it's more. I simply look at the price. And then if I can see a trend, all right, sweet. I draw my line. Does this keep staying above the trend line? Does it keep breaking upwards or has it now broken downwards? And then again, I'll watch that trend line and does it now have a history of just continuing to go down? If it's going down for more than say a week or two, then I'm probably gonna you know, look at you know, taking some of my money out of it. Again, unless it's, you know, this, it's, oh geez, it's hard to say actually, look, Prices will travel sideways for a couple of weeks in a bull market. They won't uh, go downwards for a couple of weeks in a bull market. It just doesn't happen. They will kick off and start going higher again. Again, you know, sideways with some down and up movements for a couple of weeks in a bull market. Absolutely. If something's been going down for a week or two uh, and there's, it doesn't look like it's correcting and it's just constantly setting lower highs and lower lows, you know, it's probably going to continue to happen for a while. You, you know, you won't know that uh, you're nearly at the bottom uh, until it levels out and does something like this. Like something like this, you know, you could be here and then this is the actual bottom, but, you know, unless you're really certain, you've got to have some real steel about you to invest in something when it dumps like this. But once it gets up to here and then starts to do this sideways kind of stuff and this sideways stuff goes on for, again, so what was this? let's say 29th of April through to the 20th of July. So that's a couple of months that it really traveled sideways. That is what we call an accumulation phase. And the chances are that it's going to go higher. Not impossible that it goes lower, but generally it's going to go higher and particularly in a bull market. And again, the way that I'm you know, trying to understand the charts is this is the daily. 
this is not uh, a great chart for beginners this is just too confusing uh, and you just really need to scale out so let's go to a weekly weekly all of a sudden things look uh, a little bit more easy to read all right we just got to go back to December uh, sorry January 2015 this has just been in an up market ever since uh, it, it's just been going up yeah it's had corrections comes back down goes up comes down goes up come uh, goes down comes back up and then we can scale out even further again and now we're going back to 2012 this is how you know that something is a good market be able to read this now even better let's get away from the weekly let's go to a monthly what does a monthly chart show us it's even easier to read there's less ups and downs it's just more green and you can just see this generally goes up has a correction goes up has a correction goes up has a correction goes up and it's just going to continue to keep doing this unless something you know some major fundamental flaw or some you know ca catastrophic uh, economic disaster that will change things but otherwise this is the trend and the S&P 500 has been the same and the Dow Jones has been the same just not as volatile and uh, you know they you know depending on who you believe have been artificially uh, inflated of late don't get me wrong Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies has some artificial inflation in it at the moment no doubt about it there is stimulus money that's gone into it but most of it is just long-term hodlers and uh, investors uh, again the people who will be considered the early adopters uh, you know they're not gonna freak out too much if money uh, gets tight they're just simply going to hold again some will panic and some will sell and we could see a you know 30 40 percent correction at some stage if things get really tough not 30 40 percent of the total price just 30 40 percent from the top and again that you know let's get a bar and let's find out okay here was the top what's a 40 percent correction well that's already 90 percent so a 40 percent correction from the absolute top there we go it gets us to 11,800 so that's how it works not a full you know this kind of thing that's a 90% correction not a 40% correction so you just need to be able to understand how that works when you see corrections and it's you know 20 30 percent it's not 20 30 percent of the entire uh, price of the coin it's just the percentage coming back down from the top all right, so there we've had a look at Bitcoin again. That's how I try and read markets. It's not just a cryptocurrency thing. It's any market that I'm involved in. I want to look at the charts, see if there's a constant uptrend. If there's been a downtrend that's kind of been going for a while, then I'm just going to hold out. I'm going to wait until I see a point again. You know, you see this, it just keeps going down and down. Then we get a sideways movement. It levels out. Once I see something like this, that's when I'm going to go, right here now is probably going to be a good time to get in because as you can see when it travels travels sideways god i'm struggling again it rarely ever goes down once it starts to do some sideways movement that is an accumulation phase it has reached its bottom and now's the time to get in and then you're going to ride something like this like here it got down and then it was kind of traveling sideways for a little while that was an accumulation phase it rose up came down traveled sideways for a little bit did peak up a little bit but really this is all kind of sideways in here other than you know we had this really big dip but this is accumulation and now it's getting ready to go back up again anyway let's move on ethereum from the dollar value now it is really starting to move ethereum is doing really really well and again it bounced off this line almost perfectly it doesn't have to be exactly perfect you don't have to pick things perfectly you just got to be thereabouts and again all I did was look at this and go rightio there's the bottom drew a line and it has just been ticking off this line almost perfectly and again I'm going by the price the price just continued to go up I bought in it I think 200 uh, 180 dollars or 215 dollars or something I'd have to go back and check the prices but anyway somewhere in sort of around about here is where I built most of my position I've still been dollar cost averaging in but I just looked at the charts and I was like this thing's just gonna keep going up and again I zoomed out even further 
uh, and it's much the same as the Bitcoin chart. So it was even lower here and it's just been going up since then. Yes, it goes up and comes back down a little bit, but it was still higher than this low over here. The charts were not continuing to just go down and down. So Ethereum, very, very interesting. I think Ethereum will probably outpace Bitcoin in this bull market. I really, really do. I think it's got so much upside to it. The adoption, you know, there's so much stuff being built on it. You know, Bitcoin can go onto Ethereum. Everything can go onto Ethereum, but Ethereum doesn't go onto everything else so much because it's people building the other way. It's not like uh, Bitcoin are building to put Ethereum onto Bitcoin. Bitcoin are building to put anything onto Bitcoin. They're, you know, generally maxis. Nothing against that. I, I like Bitcoin and really enjoy Bitcoin and invest in Bitcoin. But Ethereum, everyone is trying to get onto Ethereum. Everyone's building bridges to Ethereum. Uh, I think it's going to be absolutely massive. But look, there'll be a number of players. You know, Polkadot uh, looks really good and could be around. Cardano looks really good and again could be around long term. And you know, there's a ton of projects. Uh, Atom, you know, there's enough room for all of them to have a place. But there is obviously going to be one big player. That's always the way it goes. There's one big one and then a second one who's trying to, you know, take out the number one and then really there's kind of everybody else. Everybody else still makes money. It's not that they don't make money. They just don't make the kind of money that the really uh, big one or two players do. And at the moment, Ethereum is the biggest player uh, and possibly going to get even bigger. It's still very early in its... Uh, inception and you know if it gets adopted by governments and you know all sorts of things the sky's the limit so ethereum is looking really promising and you know people trying to get in on that 32 ethereum you know if you can get 32 ethereum i really think uh you know in 10 15 20 years time from now uh that is going to be worth a mint worth an absolute mint again not financial advice just personal uh, opinion uh, and you know it'll it'll have a return. I, I think someday you know if you've got thirty two Ethereum, you'll probably be able to you know live off that. I could be wrong. Again, there's no guarantees in life, but it's looking quite promising at the moment. You know, there's people calling for a five to sort of ten thousand dollar Ethereum at the end of this bull run. So if you've got thirty two Ethereum, and they go to sort of ten thousand dollars each, well, I mean you work that out. 10 times 32, that's $320,000, uh, you know, of Ethereum you'll have. That right there is, you know, more than most people would make in a year, well above what most people would make. And you imagine, you know, things like BlockFi, and I've got a, uh, a referral thing down below, I'm, I'm with BlockFi. Imagine getting 5% or 6% of $320,000 a year. That's six thousand uh, dollars times three. That's eighteen thousand dollars. Now that's not enough to retire on. Don't get me wrong, but that is a pretty good income for something that at the moment you know you can buy for. Oh God, what is? I think it's about twelve and a half thousand at the moment. Twelve and a half thousand dollars you can get thirty-two Ethereum for something like that. I could be a little bit off, but you're basically buying uh, for twice the price of what the uh, well, basically, I've lost track there. Anyway, for twelve thousand dollars, you know, you could be getting, you know, three times. Oh, no, not three times. That's what we say. Three hundred twenty six percent each time. So yeah, that's eighteen thousand dollars. So you could be getting uh, a third more on a yearly basis than what it uh, costs in total to buy it right now. Now look, in saying that, Ethereum's not going to stay at $320,000. Uh, it's going to come down, but eventually it will likely go back up again. And look, who knows what the price of it could be, you know, in let's say 10, 15, 20 years time. Let's say, you know, I'm not making this as a price prediction, but let's just say for, uh, you know, putting it out there that it, let's say it did this. Let's say it got to $50,000 per Ethereum in 20 years time 50,000 times 32 I'm not even sure what that is off the top of my head but I'm going to say that's around about sort of oh actually I'll find out give me a sec I'll put on my calculator and let's see what that is so 50 
thousand times thirty two equals one point six million dollars. So let's say uh, in you know twenty years time it gets to that. I'm not saying it will, but let's just say it did. One point six million dollars. Work out what six percent of that is, or five percent of that is. That is enough to basically pay your sort of wage. You wouldn't live like an absolute king, but not too bad. Six percent of one point six million dollars wouldn't be so bad. You know, it could at least maybe mean you could work part time or something like that. And again, that's not including, uh, you know, those returns being compounded, compounded, and things like that. All right, last but not least, let's get over here, CoinGecko. Do a bit of a refresh. All right, we have. We've broken the $450 billion mark. Things are going to start to move fast, and they already are. It's not going to be long. I remember at the peak of 2017, I think we were up around the $800 billion mark. I think we got to $880 billion, something like that. We're getting very close to a trillion dollars. Uh, and we're already sort of, well, we're halfway there, the 880, we're a little bit over with $455 billion mark. Now, gas coming down, so this is great. Uh, a lot of things are, you know, moving on to layer two solutions, which is really, really good. Uh, BTC dominance has dropped uh, just a tad. I thought it was going to make 65% for sure. Uh, and look, it still could. We'll just have to wait and see. It's the weekend, so, you know, things have definitely slowed down. What are the big movers? What's done really well? Oh, Yearn Finance, wow. And I was uh, really skeptical on Yearn Finance. This was $9,800 only maybe 48 hours ago. Look at that, 51%. So well done to Yearn Finance. Uh, Solana, Band Protocol, holy moly, 30%. Energy Web Token, there we go. 23%, 40% over the last seven days. So Uniswap, again, doing really well. Ren, absolutely pumping. Well done. Celsius Network. Uh, I am looking at getting on into Celsius Network and uh, putting some stuff into there. And I'll you know get on to you once I have a look at that. Aave, so we can see there's a number of ones. Chainlink, well done to Chainlink. You know, people were really freaking out when this got to sort of $18, I think it was, and then came all the way down to about $9, $8. Good to see it's coming back. Everything's coming back. Synthetic network uh, coming back again. I did say I thought this would sort of bounce around $2.61. It went a little bit lower. I think it went down to $2.49. So I was pretty close. You don't have to be exact, but it has bounced back uh, quite well. And I expect this to continue unless something drastic happens. As I say, there's going to have to be something really drastic that happens in the markets in general uh, for any of this to turn around. And if anyone even sort of mentions that more stimulus is coming, these are going to pump even harder. VeChain, nice, finally coming back. Uh, it, it really took a hit. But look, most platforms did. Algorand, I've got some of that. So uh, feeling pretty good. Filecoin, Whew, I thought that was dead for sure. But, uh, you know, holding in there. So let's have a look. Are there any losers? Not really. Very, very small uh, retracements. And look, those other coins that have pumped 30%, there's a chance they have a bit of a retracement over the next few days as well. I'm not saying they'll retrace uh, you know, 30% or 40% of whatever they've done, but they might pull back by a couple of percentage. So yeah, a lot of really good gainers and almost no losers really. And the market cap just continues to grow. All right. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Everyone should be on that gain train at the moment. If you're not, that's disappointing, but uh, hopefully that'll turn around very soon. And I'll see you next time.